All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Justin Bellion with Education Elements, and my colleague Megan Campion is here. Joining good morning, everybody. Um, we're excited to start off our presentation and spend part of the morning with you on recognizing and celebrating teacher success. Um, and we are hoping to share some strategies with you throughout our conversation that lead to a higher degree of teacher retention for sure, but more so to help teachers thrive. So a little bit of housekeeping before we get into it. We see a number of you have joined from across the country. Welcome and, and thanks again for being here. If you'd like to participate in the chat um, during our live stream, you certainly are more than welcome to, and we encourage you to do that. And in order to do that, you can use a YouTube chat um, and, and interact with us, with Megan and I and the other attendees. Um, all you'll need to do is make sure you're logged into YouTube and then you'll need to create a channel to join the chat as well. Um, you're probably familiar with the channel through using YouTube. You don't need to actually post anything to your channel. It's really just a way for YouTube to validate that you are in fact a real person. It's a quick gate before you can um, participate and respond in the chat. And so as Megan and I are live streaming, we are able to see your comments um, in this nifty platform that we're using. Um, and you are here with us making history with Ed Elements as we do this live stream with you all. So thanks again for being here and we'll go ahead and get into it. All right, to check in, since we're talking about teachers today, take a minute and think about who is your favorite teacher or who was your favorite teacher from your career as a student. And go ahead and share that in the, in the chat. Who is your favorite teacher? It might be somebody who you support, it might be your child's teacher, or who was your favorite teacher? Who's that teacher that made an impression on you um, that you remember? So we'll give a second for people to, to chime in here. As people are chiming in, Justin, who was your favorite teacher? That's an easy one. My favorite teacher, is uh, Mr. Gray. Mr. Gray was my English language arts teacher in Central Middle School, Parsippany, New Jersey. And he uh, he was my English teacher and he he was the first teacher that I worked with that really took time to, to get to know me as an individual and like encouraged my strange and weird science fiction and creative writing. And that, that led me to become an English teacher. What about you, Megan? Oh, my favorite teacher was Mr. Rona, and he was my history teacher at Walt Whitman High School in Bethesda, Maryland. Mm -hmm. I took every class he offered, and then my senior year, I was like a student aide for my free period in his class because he hated grading papers. So he let me be a student aide and I could grade papers. But he was a really wonderful storyteller and just a lovely guy. That's awesome. And we see, thanks for sharing. And we see, um, Catherine, you're, you're calling out Mr. Pinello, your seventh grade science teacher. Um, Ruth, you've got a favorite, a friend who's a favorite teacher. And Christian, Megan, looks like you got some fans in the audience. Um, Christian, good morning. Thanks for joining. Good morning, Christian. Mr. Uh, Lindemann, your high school teacher, who made class like really fun. Uh, Rui, thank you for joining too, your math teacher. Mr. Clodaldo um, for middle school. Excellent, excellent. Okay, well, thanks everybody for sharing and getting present with Megan and I as we talk about teachers today and specifically how we can recognize and celebrate them to help them thrive. Uh, as, as we already um, mentioned, my name is Justin. This is my colleague, Megan. I'm joining you from Miami, Florida, where I live and I started my career as an English teacher myself, um, thanks in part to Mr. Gray. And now I work with districts and schools across the country on a number of things, um, not the least of which is helping to improve the teacher experience, helping to make the teacher experience more positive um, and engaging for teachers so that students thrive and so that teachers stay in their jobs. And with me is, again, my colleague, Megan Campion. Uh, good morning again, everybody. I'm loving reading all of these things in the comments about the, the difference your teachers made. Um, I am uh, coming to you from McLean, Virginia, which is where I live. It's just outside of DC. It's where the CIA is, if you haven't been here. Um, and uh, I also was a teacher in McLean and uh, an administrator. Then I came to work with Education Elements about three years ago. 
And now I get to work with districts all over the country and I get to work with Justin and we get to uh, explore things like how best to um, target celebration as a tactic for teacher retention. Awesome, thanks Megan. Um, so today in our, in our session together, we have a couple of objectives. The first is to really understand why is it that leaders must prioritize recognizing and celebrating teachers. It might seem obvious um, to some, but maybe it's not obvious to others. So maybe if you're doing this, you can use this as a jumping off point to support um, other leaders who support teachers in your school, your district, your network. And our second objective is exploring strategies for recognizing and celebrating teacher success. So what does that actually look like? And how can you get hands on with this work? And so we'll do that through um, a couple of steps in our agenda here by first starting out and recognizing the current role of the teacher and the current conditions that teachers are experiencing. We'll take a little bit of time to check out some research um, and frame um, what it looks like and why it's important to support and recognize teachers in this way. And then, as I mentioned, uh, Megan and I will walk you through some strategies to help you understand what this looks like and how to take action. And I'll, I'll pass it over to Megan to lead us through this next part. Yeah, so I love alliteration. And so teachers change trajectories is, uh, is, um, is a truth that is very near and dear to me, um, even though it's a little difficult for me to say. Um, I think when we asked you who your favorite teacher was, I think most of you were able to identify a teacher pretty quickly. And some of you have shared some stories about what made that teacher your favorite. I'm looking at um, Catherine Gates, um, teacher who let, uh, let you paint pictures on the window, which seems so wild. It's those little moments that teachers provide for students that can have such an enormous impact on, on the way they view themselves and the way they view their potential and the and the things that they can see themselves in for the rest of their lives. We asked this question to all of our colleagues at Education Elements while we were getting ready for this webinar and then also some things that we'll be doing for Teacher Appreciation Week. And it's amazing how quickly the responses came in and how specific the memories were. We've just captured a few of them here. Um, one of them is uh, our CEO, um, Anthony Kim. His story is on the left there about walking around Chinatown in San Francisco with his mom and he ran into his teacher. Um, I think he was in fourth grade. Um, he wasn't a particularly good student. His mother cared about him being a good student and the teacher told a story about his participation and then gave, a, gave him a little gift, gave him a transformer toy that he said he had, um, he held onto it for 20 years. And that teacher was still just top of mind um, in the sort of potential she saw in him and the way she found to celebrate a strength of his. Um, our other colleagues here with Baltazar and Jill and Drea, they all have stories about these, these small moments that teachers created for them that enabled them to see like a whole different way of, um, of being a student or passions to explore. So we all know this, like we know this when we think of the teachers that made a huge difference in our lives. And it's such a truism that it's become kind of a part of pop culture. We've got, uh, this slide here has a lot of teachers, some of these teachers, like we've got um, Annie Sullivan, of course she was Helen Keller's teacher, trans transformational teacher, and this is an actual photograph of her. The rest of these are teachers who um, may be based in reality or they may just be great stories about teachers. But the truth about these teachers that we all can recognize is that a committed teacher can change so many lives, which is really inspiring and it always brings a tear to my eye, but it also illuminates the fact that we're in really risky times right now. This has been an incredibly difficult year for teachers. Um, this article was in Ed Week, I think this was last week, and I just saw an article yesterday um, that was published by NPR, um, or a story published by NPR, saying basically the same thing. This has been a year that has been stressful on teachers in ways they haven't experienced in decades. And we run the risk of having these gifted transformational teachers leaving the profession. Um, and it's a huge risk in terms of the opportunity cost that's going to get lost with the students who won't benefit from those magical moments those teachers know how to create. 
Um, it's also a big economic risk for um, schools and districts. This is a relatively old statistic. And this was, I, I mean, we might be coming up on 10 years ago or so that this statistic is pulled from. But uh, this is, as of 10 years ago, the cost of public school teacher turnover um, nationally was $7 billion a year. When you think of what it takes to, um, to train and hire um, a new teacher and get them to the point where they are able to do things without a lot of support. Um, it also has an impact on student success for every um, year that a student is taught by a teacher who is below average, it has a long-term impact on their um, lifelong earning potential. So there are lots of good reasons to focus on um, retaining teachers. Um, but we also want to think about retaining sounds so, it sounds like such a low bar if we could just get them to not leave. So what we wanted to aim for is um, let's, let's think about ways that we can get them thriving, get them really connected with what speaks to them uh, in, in their, their why for teaching and, um, and help celebrate and, uh, and illuminate the things that they're doing now that like, you know, if Mr. Rona saw this, he'd know what an impact he had on me. I'm not positive I told Mr. Rona when he was my teacher what an impact he was having on me. Um, so we have an opportunity now to let teachers sort of experience that um, that recognition um, closer to the time that they need to hear it. Thanks, Megan. And I, yeah, I'm not positive Mr. Gray knew uh, or is aware of the impact that he had on me either. He mostly just received my short stories and uh, my awkward exchanges in our middle school class. Um, and he probably experienced a lot of those types of exchanges over the course of his life cycle as a teacher. And when Megan and I are talking about helping teachers to thrive and also helping to keep teachers uh, in their roles and in their jobs, we mean that through the different phases that a teacher will experience over her, her career. So that while the career begins with, you know, the initial attraction to a particular school or district, right, or network, um, then you go into a recruiting phase, right, where the, that person is actually getting hired, interviewing, getting placed. We're really talking about these last three phases here. Once a teacher is placed in a school or in a network or in a system where they're initially onboarded, um, they're connecting with their peers and their colleagues, their new, the, the teachers and the leaders in their school, support staff in the district. Then they're moving into development, so they're more established early career to mid-career. And finally, into the empowerment phase where they're an established teacher and we're really looking for ways to recognize them, develop their leadership skills, if that's an interest of theirs or their expertise, right? And make sure that they stay in their jobs. So there is that stability um, that, that Megan was referring to earlier. And what you'll notice in this graphic right here too, is this line, this blue dotted line here that at, at Elements we call our, our line of belonging through the teacher phases. And the basic idea here is that when people feel like they belong at work, they're much more productive, motivated, and engaged, um, and three, three and a half times more likely to contribute to their fullest. And this comes from uh, research out of the Center for Talent Innovation. And um, they basically studied what employee engagement looks like across different industries and sectors. And we're thinking at elements like we look certainly at education. We also look beyond education to understand what other sectors and industries are doing to help their employees thrive. And time and time again, we come back to this notion of belonging. And so Megan and I and our team, we really connect this idea of recognizing and celebrating teachers um, to belonging and as a way to elevate one sense of belonging through their life cycle, right, to the, their experience as a teacher. And so moving to a more practical place here, right? We can build belonging while we celebrate and we recognize teachers. And one way to think about that is through these eight elements of teacher retention. So we're gonna take time to walk you through three of them um, from clear communication, career pathways and curated communities. Um, you might be thinking, Justin, consistent celebrations, that seems like an obvious one. And because that's true, 
we we're actually gonna we, we actually decided to leave it out today because we figure um, you, you might see those like natural points for celebration or when teachers hit milestones. So we wanted to elevate some elements that you might not think of as the first place as opportunities to recognize and celebrate teacher success. And to help kind of structure and organize these different um, strategies that we're gonna share with you, we've organized them each of them into three categories by element. So we'll look at three different elements and for each one, we'll share one idea for a reflection. So some way to help you step back as an individual or help your team step back and think about or write about teachers' experiences, um, interactions you've had with teachers and raise your awareness about some of their accomplishments. We'll also walk you through some routines for each of the uh, elements. So those are regular, regular, those are planned, right? Different practices, again, to identify and recognize teacher success. And then finally, rituals. So rituals are intentional practices that are designed to help people bond together, right? So these are things we're doing together in public. Hopefully they're amping up the, the group, right? And helping the groups in adapting to change. All right, so switching gears here, we're gonna take a look at our first element, which is clear communication. And so the, the basic idea in the context of teacher retention is that very clear communication with teachers regarding their goals, decisions that are made in the school or the district, um, any rationale or support for those decisions um, and communicating what support structures are in place. Those contribute to a teacher's clarity, well-being, right, um, and their own development, and certainly like their sense of belonging too. They feel informed and like they belong when they know what's going on at the school and what's going on with, with their own career. Uh, a couple of strategies for your consideration here. On the reflection side, this is really about just carving out a few minutes each week as a leader. What are some of those wins? What's some of the progress and the milestones achieved by teachers professionally and personally? Some of us naturally, we know what's going on with our teachers. We're checking in with them. It's happening informally. Some of the leaders that we support or leaders ourselves, like we just get so busy, we might not have that time to step back and think about, how's everyone doing on my staff? Is there somebody that I can call out this week and recognize? Um, another way to think about that is through a, a type of crowdsource email, right? So if you send a note to your, to your team leads, like department chairs or grade level chairs or your team of coaches, you can just ask some of those same kind of questions or prompts from that reflection in number one. Hey, can you share some teachers that have made some growth? What are some milestones that they've hit, something they're working on or something they're pushing through to raise your own awareness? Again, the first two are really about creating space and time to raise your awareness about how your teachers are doing because you might not have you might not have that time to really go and look at data, right? Or look at different progress reports um, or student, student data as closely as you want to recognize the effort that teachers are putting in. Um, and then finally, we have this ritual here that, that uh, Megan will walk you through in a second that's called elephant, dead fish and vomit. And the idea is to create space to help people recognize and name the struggle, like what's holding them back. And that might sound strange in the context of celebrating success, right? And, and recognizing what teachers are accomplishing. But recognition sometimes means recognizing the hard parts of their experience and their job. So Megan's gonna walk us through what that can look like. Yeah, with the caveat, it's not my favorite title, um, but this actually is a ritual that um, we learned about from a book that's called Rituals at Work. And the idea with, as, as Justin noted earlier, like the whole point of rituals is to help you deal with things that either, you know, it's, it's a way to go through a set of emotions with a group of people um, so that you can sort of experience that support. So sometimes they're really positive rituals, but in a year like the one we've had, um, it's actually really helpful to have a group processing of the things that people have gone through. So this is um, this ritual uh, we learned about, as I said, in this book, and it came from Airbnb. This is something um, Airbnb's corporate culture has been celebrated as something that um, does really promote a sense of belonging and people are really aligned. And this is something that the leadership at Airbnb has cited as one of the things that um, has really helped build that sense of belonging and uh, and connection in their culture. So 
It's called elephant, dead fish, and vomit. And I'll tell you what each of these things stands for. Elephant, we're all familiar with that, like the elephant in the room, the big thing that is here, but nobody's talking about. So the elephant's the big thing that nobody's talking about. The dead fish is something that um, has happened. It's over, but we haven't processed it. We haven't gotten it over yet. And we may be making decisions or we may be... Um, sort of just experiencing things differently because we haven't thoroughly processed this thing. So that's, you get the idea that there's dead fish and it smells bad. Um, and then uh, vomit, again, not my favorite, but it is uh, uh, helpful. I guess it's very evocative. We kind of know what we're talking about when we're talking about uh, this. And this is things that people just need to vent. So there may not be anything to do about the thing that people need to vent about, but they just need to get it off of their chest and they need to get it out there. Now, if you haven't had um, any structures in place for people to talk about this in meetings or you know, in uh, more formal settings, you might wanna get started by introducing it um, in, in an anonymous survey, if you feel like there's uh, an opportunity to sort of build up that psychological safety so people could be comfortable bringing it up. So sending out a survey, inviting people to name the thing. What is your elephant? What is your dead fish? And what are things you want to vent about if you don't want to say vomit? Um, when you've got the results and you can see what everybody has said, you can bring it up in a meeting and sort of explain the terminology behind each and the value of, of having a group conversation about this so that there is an acknowledgement of the things that are concerning people or the things that they're still getting over or the things they need to vent about. Once you've established that um, vocabulary and people know what you're talking about when you say elephant, dead fish or vomit, um, what it says in the book and what Airbnb does is they have this as a sort of a norm of their meetings. Like if they find in a meeting, they're unable to attend to the, um, the topic at hand because they're worried about this big thing nobody's talking about. Somebody in the meeting can say, elephant, here's the thing that I think we're not addressing that I think is really kind of keeping us from being able to address this larger thing we're here for. So this is um, intended to be a supportive idea to get the conversation going so that people can review the things that have negatively impacted them or that may be keeping them from, um, from seeing things in the best possible light. Thanks, Megan. Yeah, it's, um, it, it really is important, like as you mentioned, to create the space and clear the air for people and the, having a protocol to do it too. And I appreciate what you said about maybe starting with a survey just to keep it anonymous or maybe just starting with like your immediate leadership team to practice it and kind of see how it goes and, and get used to the protocol as well. All right, um, we're gonna switch up gears here and move on to our second element, career pathways. And so probably all of you are familiar with the concept of career pathways and which is essentially like providing teachers with options for, for leadership and growth. And thinking through how you can recognize what teachers are doing in their growth and creating opportunities and talking about and celebrating that growth is kind of merges with clear communication for sure and celebrating, um, ce uh, celebrating teacher victories. Um, but we wanted to capture it in the context of career pathways because we really want to make sure teachers feel seen and teachers feel valued. And there's a few ways that you can go about doing this. Um, one is on the reflective side, thinking about, look at the list of teachers you support. Just kind of scan the list. This might be kind of quarterly, maybe monthly, depending on what your role is. Circle any teachers that you've actively supported in their growth. That might be a coaching conversation or encouraging them to attend a webinar or a session or encouraging them to plan and lead a session for your district or your school or your network. And then underline and prioritize three you have not directly supported. That might, you know, part of those teachers might be ones who you actually aren't, you know, aren't under your care, aren't under your supervision. But you might notice that actually your support is, has been focused on a handful of teachers and there's others who you might maybe didn't have yet time to support and work with yet. So again, this is about raising awareness and knowing and being active about identifying who you have been helping and who you maybe haven't had a chance to help yet in the current quarter. 
Um, from there, you know, you might reach out to teachers and help them set some goals or have conversations. Uh, Megan's going to give us walk us through a protocol to have such a conversation to identify goals and, and passions. And through that, you might consider a routine like shadowing. So every month you get into this routine where you're connecting a teacher with some type of mentor or somebody in the community who does the job or has part of a job that mimics right or approximates something the teacher is interested in. So that teacher has some exposure. And the idea is like, hey, I see you. I see that you're interested in this. I want to give you a chance and an outlet to learn from somebody else and to kind of see what this works look this work looks like uh, before you commit to anything else. Um, and then finally, the ritual here is supporting and amplifying um, passions through hero questions, and that really helps to understand and uncover what is what is it that teachers are interested in, what their goals are, um, and using questioning and deliberate questioning to help uncover to uncover these passions. Yeah, um, as Justin noted, sometimes when we're working with uh, with people, maybe they can't quite articulate like the thing that they're really passionate about or the thing that they wanna focus on for growth, the thing they feel like they could build on to be truly great. Um, and these hero questions can help you as a person who is um, is guiding the, the teachers that you're working with, it can help you kind of get to the, to the, um, to refine the things that, that, that give them energy and that they could build on to become, you know, like somebody's favorite teacher. Um, so these questions um, would probably best be um, introduced with like some sort of cadence, you know, maybe like once a month or once every couple of months when you're having a one-on-one -on -one check in, um, asking the teacher about like, what happened this month that left you really energized? What was like a high point of the month for you? Um, or, uh, you know, as you're approaching the end of the year, um, this is a really good question this year in particular, what have you learned about yourself this year? Uh, what strengths? Did you find yourself relying on this year? What was most useful for you? Um, and who have you recently helped? And what difference did it make in their work and in yours? Or, you know, in, in their schoolwork and in yours? Um, getting people to reflect on those things that we all called out at the beginning of the, those moves the teacher made so they can reflect on their own moves and say like, oh gosh, you know what? I did make a huge difference to that student that day or my colleague really relied on me that day and I did, I was able to really kind of guide them to the next step. That sense of your own contribution is something that is a, a really key piece of that sense of belonging that can keep um, people passionate about what they're doing even when things aren't going well. And then the other information that you can get from the times that people felt energized or the lessons they've learned about themselves, the strengths they've developed, you can go ahead and apply those to those questions of like, well, you know what, you might want to connect with this teacher and shadow them for a while and see if you can lean in more on this thing that you're passionate about. So there, if you're interested in more um, ideas about this, like these hero questions and ways to coach teachers, um, if you're interested in it, there's a pretty decent chance you already know Elena Aguilar, but um, we got these questions from uh, some resources that Elena Aguilar shared, and she has a lot more, so recommend checking her out. Yeah, and if, if you're thinking about like, when might you fit this into your workflow, or like when would it make sense for you to have these sorts of conversations? We know that pretty much every school and district has some type, some type of structure where teachers are meeting with a principal or a school leader, reviewing their development goals for the year. There's some sort of like ob formal observation round that happens um, and maybe debrief. And so you could time these questions with that debrief or some of the goal setting. Because unfortunately, even though, you know, we know that as principals and leaders, you care deeply about your teachers. Um, there's a kind of a bare minimum kind of compliance driven amount of work that needs to get done to make sure all teachers, yes, they have their annual eval completed and we set their growth and development goals and we checked all the boxes. This can simply be a way to add a dimension to those conversations. Um, 
and really help illuminate for you what it is that teachers care about and do it in a way that might feel more accessible as, as Megan was breaking down for us. All right, so our last element here that we're gonna feature is around curated communities. So the idea of really being intentional about how you're helping teachers to connect with one another, collaborate around problems of practice, or really just share with others who share interests um, or who share some common aspect of identity with others in the school or district, and that these communities are created around a very clear purpose. And this is really an important, especially now and especially over the past year when we've been very distributed and largely virtual to help maintain um, a sense of belonging, help people feel connected to their school and help people feel connected to even a small group of people in their school community so that they feel like they're a part of the team. Someone's keeping tabs on them and looking out for them. Um, and a couple of things that you can do here is really, again, on the reflection side, scheduling time to send one to two messages to leaders or teachers you support, just like a really casual check-in. Hey, Justin, or hey, Megan, how's it going? Uh, what are you working on this month? What are, you, what are you trying to achieve this month? What's something that maybe you're feeling stuck on and offering some support? Again, getting into that routine and, and, and that reflective mode and saying like, who haven't I spoke to in a while? Um, that can just help to raise your own awareness, but also let teachers know that you're paying attention to them. And it might actually delight them and surprise them to get a message from you. So like, oh, I haven't heard from this from my principal in a while. It's nice, it's nice to get this message. They might also feel very differently and be like, why is the principal emailing me, right? But over time, as that becomes normal, they, they may grow to appreciate it and know that you're looking out for them. Um, the other routine that you can get into, and I know at, at Education Elements, we do this pretty consistently, including in this meeting, is just starting each meeting with a check-in. And it's more than just like, hey, how are you doing? Although that's a perfectly adequate way to start. Um, it's really a way to help teachers share some of the happenings in their lives, maybe some of the accomplishments. You could even use some of the questions that Megan just walked us through as check-ins, especially in a one-on-one -on -one setting. So this is a way, again, to help you get to know your teachers better and to help them get to know you better as well to build that relationship. Uh, and then finally, you could leverage this ritual um, that we refer to as gratitude messages and that's building time into staff meetings or team meetings and really asking people to pause take a few moments out of the meeting and recognize each other and express some gratitude for each other around some pretty specific um, criteria so we'll, let's take a look at how you can do that and why yeah i think when we think about expressing gratitude I think we always imagine that um, it is the beneficiary of our thanks who is like really enjoying the um, the best part of the expression of gratitude. Like if I say thank you to Justin, I'm like, oh, lucky Justin got thanked. But in truth, the practice of expressing gratitude is really benefiting me when I do it. Um, the I can't remember when I first heard the fact that um, anxiety and gratitude cannot coexist in your brain at the same time, but it left a huge mark on me. And I started thinking about it, like, is that true? And experimenting with it. And if I was looping on something that was making me worry, I would think like, okay, well, what am I grateful for? And I would start ticking off the things I was grateful for. And it is, it is true. The, those, those, um, those thought patterns, you know, originate from different parts of your brain. And if you start expressing gratitude, you are actually, you know, burning sort of really beneficial neural pathways um, as you're expressing gratitude. Um, and I am a history major, so maybe don't get too far down the road with my neuroscience, but um, there is a lot of research that backs it up and some of it is even uh, accessible to a history major. Um, the uh, source that we have on this slide, um, that is an article about the impact of gratitude on your brain. Um, and so encourage you to check that out. And then we have a little experiment we're gonna walk you through here so that you can get kind of the whole feeling. Um, we have done this uh, on several occasions. 
Um, and I'd like to cite my source on this, but my source is actually a colleague of ours who did it with us the first time, and I've been using it ever since, but I'll see if I can find the better source for this. Um, the, the way that we would start this in a check-in meeting is to ask, um, how are you feeling right now? And this is our sort of mood meter, and you can look, we've got you know your energy levels on uh, one side and the pleasantness the relative pleasantness of how you're feeling is on the other. And you want to basically, I mean, ideally you'd be in that upper uh, right hand quadrant there. Um, when we get that um, snapshot of the group of how people are feeling, um, we get this in a couple ways. You can write down what people say if you give them this option and then look at the grid yourself. We've done it virtually to just have people use the annotate feature in Zoom or whichever video conferencing um, platform you're using. If you can get people to indicate how they're feeling, then you can screenshot it and you have a little snapshot of how people were feeling coming into this experience. Um, once we've got that documented, we move on to the next bit. And this is where I'm gonna ask you all to play along. Um, if you could, um, grab your phones or your iPad, or if you want to send an email or Slack somebody or whatever your messaging is. Um, and you could go ahead and send a message first to a person who um, makes you laugh. Somebody who pretty consistently makes you laugh. Just send them a message. It doesn't have to say like, hi, you make me laugh. And somebody told me to send this. You could just say hi. And our next prompt, hopefully you've found that person and you shot them a quick message. Uh, next, think of somebody who always has a great insight. There's a person in your life who always, you talk to them and you walk away going, oh, wow, I never thought of it that way before. Our next one is someone whose leadership you admire. When you're thinking about how you could be a better leader, this is a person who comes to mind and you know them well enough to send them a text. Uh, next one, this one gets a little uncomfortable, but it's still worth trying. Um, somebody you wanna get to know better, somebody you think you might end up being pretty good friends with, but you just haven't had the chance to make that connection. We got two more here. And our next one is somebody whose style you really admire. So if there's somebody in your life that you think always looks pretty slick, send them a note. And again, you don't have to tell them why, it could just be hi. And then finally, because you all are in education, there's probably a whole bunch of people who would fit this last category, but think of a person who you believe always prioritizes what's best for kids. And now that you've done that, when we have done this with groups, we go back to our mood meter and ask you how you're feeling now. And in most cases, when we've run this experiment, we have had more, um, more indicators, more, more claiming of moods that are either further to the right or further to the right and above. So encourage you to run this experiment with your teams um, and also, I hope you enjoy all the responses that you'll get throughout the day from the people you reached out to because uh, we made you. Thanks, Megan. I, uh, as a result of your facilitation, I received a message myself and that really <laughs> made my morning better. It's been a, it's been a hectic morning, so I, I appreciate that. Um, all right, so as, as we wrap things up here, Hopefully you're feeling, and Kelly, I see, I see your comment here. You're feeling lighter. You're feeling more present. 
you're feeling um, grateful for the teachers that you work with and that you support and that, that you get to work with and that you get to support. And you're also feeling a little bit more informed. Uh, maybe some things that you knew to be true or you knew are good ideas and you're like, yeah, I have a stronger grasp on what it can look like and some pretty quick to implement routines or reflections to better support and recognize and celebrate the teachers that I interact with. And so today, again, we, you know, we took time to understand why it's important for leaders to do this kind of work and recognize and celebrate teachers. And we walked through some strategies. So hopefully you do feel a little bit more clear on what this can look like for you and in the context of your school. We will be sharing uh, all of our slides so that you can refer back to this as a resource in case you want to pick up on any of the thinking or the recommendations or read some of the articles that and research that Megan pointed out. Um, and as we close up here, we have one more question for you before you leave us, before you leave Megan and I this morning. And that's just to share one word, or if you want to get fancy, share an emoji to describe how you're feeling leaving today's session. So thanks again for joining us on um, our time together, thinking through how we can better recognize and celebrate teachers. Let us know how you're feeling as you exit today, and we appreciate your time. All right, we got the star emoji going on. Yeah. Thanks, JRB. Oh, the whole team's here, all right. energized and peaceful. Peaceful is good. Hopeful and recharged. Feeling good. All right. Awesome. I'm glad I'm glad you like the texting too. Feeling the love, feeling the love. We've got some smiles going on. Positive vibes. It's a great way to head into maybe lunchtime or to start your day. Um, Again, thank you everybody for making the time to be here. We're, we're grateful for you. And we hope that you leave and you're able to pick up on one of these ideas and do something today or in the next day or two to recognize and celebrate the teachers that, that you get to work with. That's all for us. Um, take care everybody. And again, we appreciate you being here with us this morning.